Hi guys, it's me, Tamala Baldwin, and you are watching Soul Kisses TV. And today, we are chatting with a phenomenal woman, Laurel Kaufman, founder of Elevate My Brand. Thank you so much for being here with me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. Hi guys. <laughs> so you guys, I just met Laurel um, when I launched Soul Kisses TV. Complete stranger. She is so kind. She introduced me to all these wonderful people. My parents just really taught me to be very philanthropic and always give back and make an effort to help others. So, so guys, Laurel is a lawyer, <laughs> which I find to be very, very impressive. Can you tell us how you got on that path? And when you were in law school, how did you imagine you were gonna, you know, impact the world? What did you want to do? Like, sure. Well, um, you know, like any nice little Jewish girl from the valley, um, my parents always wanted me to go to law school, and they always told me that that kind of an education was something that no one could take away from you, mm -hmm. and that I would be able to support myself forever if I had that, and it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really, it was really my family's influence that got me to law school. And then once I was there, I realized it was not like Law and Order or any of the movies, and um, kind of took a different path, so. You actually worked for the Philly DA's office and the narcotics division. I and I can imagine in Philly, it wasn't, you know, pretty or glamorous. Nothing like Gucci, no plush office, like, what was it like for you? I mean, and how long were you interning there? I was there uh, for a summer program, and it was definitely challenging and eye-opening. Uh, Philadelphia is one of the most dangerous cities in the country, mm -hmm. so uh, I realized very quickly that was not the path that I was going to go down. And that made you transition into entertainment law, correct? I did, yes. I did a lot of contracts for Jill Scott and... Uh, um, L.O. Cool J and King Brit, some really great um, artists out of Philadelphia. So that was definitely, you know, more glamorous and fabulous. What was that like, um, being a lawyer on that side of the field or spectrum? Well, to be honest, I was still a baby lawyer, so okay. I was doing a lot of the research, <laughs> and I was really the only contact I had with them was picking the phone and saying, oh my gosh, I'm talking to you on the other line. But, uh, but it was, you know, that's how you start, and it was, um, it was interesting, and I thought that that would be an easy transition for me when I moved back to L.A., since it's so entertainment heavy here, so. So when you came back to L.A., what was it like? What did you do? How did you, you know, get your feet wet? What was the next chapter in your life? Well, of course, first I studied for the bar exam, which was one of the most painful few months of my life. I have a few <laughs> friends that are lawyers, and I remember, like, for three months, they would just be like, I'm gonna kill myself. Oh, so, yeah. like, they tell you when you're getting started for, the, for studying that you are preparing for war, and that is exactly what it's like. But um, but I passed my first time, knock Yay. on wood. <laughs> Yay! I actually ended up taking a different path in my life. When I came back to LA, my father came down with cancer. He's totally healthy now, so we're very, very blessed. But um, I actually had to step in and run his company, which was a custom retail furniture show, or a large-scale one. So that's kind of how I got involved in, in the retail industry. How was it being in the retail sector? I mean, and what did you do for your company? And how long were you there? Um, I was there for two years while my dad was getting healthy again, thank mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. um, I did everything from the marketing and merchandising to seasonal buying, training, dealing with the entire staff. It was an education in life, to say the least. Yes. But what it really taught me was that I love working with retailers, so I could use my law degree and my MBA to help companies in the same arena, which is what I'm doing now. In that job, I did all the uh, buying and merchandising and marketing and training and. So, so you did buying. So you were meeting with all these fabulous designers. Is what you're saying? I did all the furniture shows ah! and went back east and yeah, absolutely. That is so lovely. I mean, if you guys could see, she has the most incredible style, the most incredible decor. And I'm jealous just a little, you know, I think it's amazing. So your dad gets better and what is the next chapter in your life? Right. Well, um, he got healthy, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Not the wood there. Um, and you know, I stepped back away, and I was looking at applying to the big firm jobs. And every time I would get an offer, I was like nauseous. Really? Yeah, I just knew that it wasn't the right thing for me. Because you know, Laurel does have pretty amazing credentials. Like you could definitely get the big office job, but you just chose 
to launch your own firm. I did. I launched my own firm. I had a lot of retailers and uh, people in the restaurant industry who were coming to me for contract help, business planning help, um, negotiating their deals and things like that. So. A lot of people would not be at, be so courageous. I mean, sure, you know, because a company, you know, the security, you have health insurance, you're definitely getting that weekly paycheck. What do you think compelled you to, I don't know, take that leap and really follow your instinct, basically? I think that you are entrepreneurial by nature and spirit, mm -hmm. and it just takes some incident to really expose that nature in each person. And the experience of running my family store really brought that out in me. Like I said, I was applying for all the big jobs and it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. I was getting those kinds of offers yeah. and I was like, no, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I really want to do something on my own. Okay. And so I can imagine once you said, okay, guys, I'm going to do this. It was very scary. Oh, yes. And my parents were totally freaking <laughs> I can After $140,000 in student loans, and yeah, they were not so happy, yes. but supportive. Yes, I can imagine. So how did you balance that? Like, what, were you, what advice can you give to people that are trying to launch their own career? And what was your experience? The first, I guess, six months, what was it like? Really scary. Um, lots of uh, ramen. <laughs> Um, I was very lucky that because of the um, career that I had working with my family's company, I had already had exposure to a lot of great retail brands. Mm -hmm. So I was working um, in, a, in a consultant capacity for, for the first incarnation of my business. Okay. So, but as, as in terms of advice, I mean, just you just got to take the leap of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put something, if you put your heart and spirit and soul into something like Soul Kisses TV, um, you're going to accomplish your goals. Okay. So. What do you think is the first step though? I mean, because people can be really unorganized and scatterbrained. What do you think was the key component to your success in launching? Luck. <laughs> um, I think, you know, like I said, it was a lot about the exposure that I'd had to other retail brands. Mm -hmm. The education was a huge step up for me. Mm -hmm. um, people really just took me a lot more seriously. And because I had both the legal and the business background, I could go with both uh, after both kinds of clients. Tell us about your aha moment that made you decide to mesh your passion for food and wine and your marketing and legal background? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, I guess I would have to say I was sitting in front of my computer working on a contract and absolutely bored to tears. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I no longer wanted to be just a lawyer, um, just doing contracts and things in that arena. So I was just ready in that moment for a transition. And so, Food and wine and your legal background, tell us more about your clients that you're working with now and what you are helping them to do. So Elevate My Brand has been so successful because we allow uh, you know, the founder or the CEO of a company to really take on the life of the company and leave the day-to-day -day marketing initiatives to the experts. So you basically take your clients and your nonprofit affiliations and partner them together to create magic. Do. It's, it's really exciting. We do a lot of events. Can you offer any advice to people watching right now as to how to find their passions, tap into them to design their best life? Because you are a perfect example of that. Absolutely. Um, I know it's going to sound a little hippie, but uh, it is my background after all. <laughs> um, I'd say meditation, really just being silent and still with yourself and figuring out what those passions are, and then just going after it. Life is too short not to be doing something that you're passionate about. So, I know that social media is the new big thing right now, but I know that you just can't rely on new media to be successful. And I think a lot of companies are doing that now. So what advice do you think? What is the most important element a company should have to elevate their brand? <laughs> Thank you for the book. Um, <laughs> I love well, it. Well, I think that it's, uh, it's important to, as you said, focus on both traditional and new media uh, marketing techniques. But I would say the most important advice I could offer a new company or a company looking to take it to the next level is just make sure you have the right team in place. That includes a fantastic advisory board with people in many different areas that you can rely on for advice. Uh, that means internally in the company having people on the operations side that are really wonderful, the right attorneys, bookkeepers, accountants, a marketing team is the most important part, obviously. <laughs> um, but you know, you really have to have the right team in place and be ready to spend the money to do that. So I know as an entrepreneur, many companies like to do everything themselves. It's really hard to let go. They wear a hundred thousand hats. Mm -hmm. 
Has that been your experience as well, that you come across companies and CEOs that are just doing too much? Absolutely. Um, it's a very difficult transition when you're, you know, it's your baby. Mm -hmm. And people do wear so many hats, but unfortunately spread themselves too thin. And when you do that, you're really not useful to anyone. So, we've been talking a lot about business and how to tap into your passions to design your best life. But what you don't know is that Laurel is so, so philanthropic. She is involved in a handful of organizations. Tell us more about who you help and support. Absolutely. Well, you know, like we discussed earlier, I just, I so believe in giving back. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important. Uh, so, 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 <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, like we were saying earlier, I just really believe in being philanthropic and giving back into this world. And uh, one of the organizations I was working with was Girls in Tech. I was the managing director here in LA. Nice. And that organization was all about uh, really education and empowerment of young women and men too, uh, about how technology influences our daily life. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time in your life where you were not as progressive or forward thinking? You know, I, I had to be parents growing up and they always instilled in me the importance of doing philanthropic work, so. Hippie parents, y'all! That's the key, hippie parents! <laughs> High five to you guys! <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing! So once you have that initial idea and you're taking that initial step, what do you think is the critical component to be successful? I mean, right. I mean, I, I wouldn't say there's any one, like, key critical component. Really, it's about getting up every day, doing the best that you can do every day, knowing when to ask for help, putting in above and beyond the hours. Mm -hmm. It's not just an eight-hour workday yes. ever. Mm -hmm. um, and just really setting goals for your company and what you want your vision for that company to be. So what is the key to success, or your success, anyone's success? Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any one key. I think um, it takes perseverance, it takes dedication. I mean, it's, it's a really hard process to make something that's your own successful. Getting up in the morning every day and just doing the best job that you can, knowing when to ask for help, and setting really clear goals for what your vision for your company is. Awesome. That is beautiful. Before we close, tell folks where they can find more about Elevate My Brand and uh, you can find me at elevatemybrand.com and if you're interested in food and wine, come check out my blog at laurelkey.com. There you have it folks, Laurel Kaufman, Pamela Baldwin, and you're watching Soul Kisses TV. Love was long